Hello, welcome to another video. If you've been on this channel for a while, you would know that I already did this video in the past. In fact, it had over 13,000 views and almost 500 likes. But there was a tiny mistake that I made in just writing. Not the idea, not the proof, but in my expression, as a mathematician, it was difficult for me to let it be. So I decided to take it down and I'm redoing it. So if you've never seen this video before, make sure you watch it because it's a key to many limit problems you'll be solving in trig trigonometry um, as you go on. And it's basically to show that this limit is equal to one and that this limit is equal to zero. You will need to have these memorized if you're just starting your limits journey. Let's get into the video. So the first step we're going to take is to get a circle of radius 1 because it makes our life easy. So we have a circle of radius 1. The radius is 1. We're going to construct a tangent, a line that touches a circle. And remember from your geometry, a tangent of a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So we're going to assume this is a straight line. and. We draw a line. The angle here is theta, and this theta is the angle in question. Now let's break this uh, picture down into different parts. Now remember that if you want to find the tangent of this angle, so let's call this A, call this B, and call this C. We know that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so the opposite is going to be CB divided by the adjacent is 1. So this is basically tan theta equals CB. So we can say CB is equal to tan theta. So I can label this as tan theta, actually. Label it as tan theta. That's what that side is. That's good. Now, let's do something else. What is the area of this triangle? Okay, I need three things and I'm going to show you how to combine them. The area of this triangle we have, since it's a right triangle, is half the base multiplied by the height, right? Yes, let's do that. Half the base times the height. So we can say area of triangle ABC is one half the base. What is the base? It is one. And what is the height? It's tan theta. Oh, so we can say that triangle ABC is equal to just tan theta over 2. Oh, nice. There's one more thing. You see this big triangle can be divided into two. Okay? We can divide this triangle into this sector. Look. This sector here, which I'm about to shade, you see, oh, let, me, let me shade the upper part. So this is one part of the sector, I mean of the triangle, and the other part is what you call a sector. So the triangle has two parts. It has this part that I shaded, and it also has the sector, such that if you add this to this, you're supposed to get the area of ABC. So this is what we're going to say. What is the area of this sector? Well, this is just a fraction of the area of a circle, right? And if we're working in radians, if theta is in radians, we can say that area of this sector is equal to one half r squared theta. Okay, now from your pre-calculus, this is how you find the area of a circle of radius r, okay? If theta is 2 pi, then you're good. Because if theta goes around, then it means you have 2 pi, it just means it's r squared uh, pi, which is, or pi r squared, which is the area of a circle. Do you understand that? Okay, so basically that's the idea. If you're in radians, this is how you find the area of a circle. It is 1 half 
r squared theta. If theta is a complete circle, then this would be 2 pi, so that it would be r squared times pi, which is pi r squared, which is the area of a circle. So, this is the area of the sector. But what did we say the radius was again? The radius is 1. So, it means that this is equal to 1 half of 1 squared times theta, which is equal to theta over 2. Mmm. Mmm. One more thing you need to do. Let's assume that we draw a line here. Now you have a triangle, a tiny bit of, um, what would that be? Like a slice of watermelon, right? Okay, up here in the middle, and then you have the shaded region. So there are three sectors here. But whatever you do, you know that this triangle is always less than or equal to this sector. Okay? And whatever you have here will be less than the entire triangle. So this is, this is the chain we're going to build and then we'll see how that goes. Now, imagine that you want to find the area of this triangle. Well, there's something we know about a triangle. If you have a triangle and this angle here is theta and this is AB, Okay, we say that the area of this triangle is 1 over 2 AB sine theta. This is usually how we find the area of a triangle if you know the included angle and you know two of the sides. This is from your geometry, 10th grade, whatever grade you took it. Okay, so we're going to say now that the area of this triangle, let's call this point ABC, let's call it D. So we say area of triangle ADB, let's call it A, let's get ABD, will be equal to one half of AB will just be one one, which would be R times R, because these are radii, right? R equals one, R equals one, so it's gonna be times sine theta, which is gonna be equal to, well, we said the radius was one, so that's half times one times one times sine theta, which is equal to sine theta over two. Now we've gotten everything we need. As long as you understand this all from geometry, then we can go here and establish something. So let's prove it quickly. Area of triangle ADB is less than the area of the sector. Okay, I'm going to sketch the sector like this. And I'll call it, that sector, I can call it A, ADB also. Okay, ADB. <laughs> but less than or equal to, and this is less than or equal to also the area of... So the mistake I made in the previous video was I forgot to put or equal to, and it invalidated everything I did after then, and that's it. That's the only error that was in the video. Okay, so, and this has to be then the area of ACB, less than or equal to the area of ACB, triangle ACB. What is the area of ADB? We just calculated it, or ABD, whatever you call it, sine theta over two. So, sine theta over two is less than or equal to what is the area of the sector, ADB, area of sector would be theta over 2, which is less than or equal to the area of ACB. We found the area of ACB or ABC to be tan theta over 2. Nice. Well, all of them have 2s. We can get rid of the 2s, right? So let's write it as sine theta is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to tan theta. Mm. Now I'm going to divide everything by sine theta. Now, we're going to now, assume, I know that it's possible that sine theta is positive or negative, but for the sake, because if this changes, this also will change, so it restores itself. So let's just assume that theta is positive, just for generalization's sake. Um, we're going to divide everything by sine theta. And what do you have here? Divided by sine theta 
divided by sine theta divided by sine theta. What would you get? Well, it looks like we're going to get 1. It's less than or equal to theta over sine theta, which is less than or equal to tan theta over sine theta. What would that be? Let's do that here. What is tan theta? Tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So when you divide it by sine theta, it just gives you 1 over cosine theta. But I'm going to leave it this way and say, right now, what do I do? I'm going to take the limit. Or I can flip it. Well, let's flip everything. If we flip 1, 1 stays as 1. If we flip this, this becomes sine. We don't need to flip it because it's also true in this case. Sine theta over theta. But it means the sines will flip. And then this flips also becomes cosine theta. But again, you can flip it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip all of this this way and say that mm, cosine theta is less than or equal to sine theta over theta, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, this is that side flipped. I have flipped everything. Now I can take the limit of each of these terms. I know that the limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine theta is less than or equal to the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta, which is less than or equal to the limit as theta goes to zero of one. Well, this is a constant. This, we don't know, okay? But we know this is one, because if you plug in zero here, you get one. So 1 is sandwiched, I mean, the, this limit is sandwiched between, yeah. So by the squeeze theorem, let's write this, limit as theta goes to 0 of sine theta over theta. And by the squeeze theorem, this limit is equal to 1. It justifies this. So we say by squeeze, oh, I got a squeeze here. Squeeze theorem, <laughs> the limit as sine, as theta goes to zero, this is terrible, over theta is equal to one. Well, this is the proof. Yeah, that looks squeezed, too much squeezed. But you can see it. That's the conclusion, and this is true. So how do we apply that to this one? I'm just going to go from here, and I'm going to do some algebraic manipulation, and we get this. So let's quickly do that. Now, notice that. Even if you have the limit as, if this is 1 minus cosine theta, is the same thing because I can pull the negative sign here and then whatever I get, negative times a 0 will still give you a 0. So whether this is cosine theta minus 1 or 1 minus cosine theta, you still get the same answer. So what do we do? Let's start from here. We know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. If I square both sides, what I'm going to get will be the limit as theta goes to zero of sine. So when I square both sides, it will be the limit. So remember that the limit of a function is the function of the limit. You can always pull out the limit, okay? So the limit of a square is the square of the limit. So if I square both sides, I could as well just square this over theta squared is equal to one squared, okay? And 1 squared will be 1, so I don't need to write this. Or maybe I just write it so you see what I've done, squaring both sides. Now, what's the next thing I need to do? But I know that sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine squared theta, right? So I can replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. But 1 minus cosine squared theta is the difference of two squares, right? So which means... I can write this as 1 minus cosine theta times 1 plus cosine theta. So, which the same thing as sine squared theta can be written this way. So, instead of writing this, I'm going to say this is the limit as theta goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine squared theta over theta times 1 plus cosine, sorry, 1 plus cosine theta over theta equals 1. 
I have just rewritten this this way. Now I can split this limit because this is like this. I can say this is the limit as theta goes to zero of one minus cosine theta over theta times the limit of one plus cosine theta over theta as theta goes to zero and it's equal to one. So now I can take this limit down here and say, because this is what I'm looking for. So I say that the limit as theta goes to zero of one minus cosine theta over theta will be equal to one over the limit as theta goes to zero of one plus cosine theta over theta. Remember, the reciprocal of a limit is the limit of the reciprocal. The reciprocal of a limit is the limit of the reciprocal. So I can flip this so that this is the same thing as one. So instead of writing one plus cosine theta over theta, I'm just gonna be taking the limit as theta goes to zero of theta over one plus cosine theta. Mm. Do you see what I just did there? Remember that the reciprocal of a limit is the limit of the reciprocal. So now let's plug in zero. One plus the cosine of zero is one. That's zero over one plus one. That's zero over two. What is zero over two? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is zero. So the limit as theta goes to zero of one minus cosine theta over theta is equal to zero. Mission accomplished. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.